Hello, everyone. I'm Abigail Walsh on behalf of the Flute New Music Consortium. Um, today, we're speaking with Dr. Ellen Harrison about herself and her composition, Beneath a Canopy of Wings, which was the winner of the FNMC's composition competition for Flute Plus One. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you. It's great to be here. Great. So Ellen, to begin, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself, your musical background, and your current activities? Sure. I'm from Streeter, Illinois. It's a very small town in the middle of Illinois, you know, 15 miles south of Route 80, so not really near anything two hours away from any large city. So very, it's kind of a sheltered upbringing. It's the kind of town where uh, they have ice cream socials and the 4th of July parade is very big. And um, of course I was in marching band, so I was in those parades, but my musical background started earlier. I lived a block away from my grandmother when I was young and every day I would go up there and hang around at her house. And she pretty much spent most of the day playing piano. And I think she thought that was a fun thing for kids to do, listen to her. I don't know. Actually, it was fun for me. So I feel like I was really like enveloped in music from a young age. And um, I think that the town I lived in gave me sort of like this cocoon that I lived in, but um, definitely played at the ice cream socials. And guess what I played? I played flute. Wonderful. I'm sure not as good as any of you all, but <laughs> I did play. That's great. And um, yeah, when I was in high school, no, junior high, I went to the Illinois Summer Youth Music Program at the U of I, and I just loved it, simply loved it. And um, I was determined I wasn't going to go to college anywhere else. And I knew I wanted to be a music major. So that's where I went. I did not apply to any other college. I can't believe it. Nowadays, people <laughs> apply for so many. Right. And um, yeah, so I got my undergraduate degree at University of Illinois, which, you know, the college itself was larger than my hometown and just absolutely loved it there. And after college, I went off to Germany and had a little adventure and uh, ended up going to the conservatory there and got an um, artist, artist diploma. None of this was in flute, let's remember. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I started out in music education and um, Oh yeah, well, this answers a question that's later. So maybe I better leave that for now. So my background um, was mainly in flute, a little bit of piano, and then composition in college. And all of my father, you know, later degrees were in composition. I, after Germany, I went to UC Berkeley for my master's and, and doctorate. And then Berkeley sent me to Paris. So I had this, this great experiences hearing music all over the world. And, well, not all over the world, but you know, much wider world than Streeter, Illinois, that's for sure. Yeah. And um, ended up after that in Cincinnati. And now I'm teaching at the conservatory. And yeah, at the moment, I usually, well, at, at the moment I'm writing a piece for orchestra. So for the concert orchestra up at CCM, my good friend, Ai Kai Pung is the conductor and he's just marvelous. And he's asked me to write a piece and cool. You know, I, I, you know, I haven't written for orchestra since graduate school, so I usually write for chamber music and I, I love mm -hmm. chamber music and, you know, vocal music, but so this is actually pretty fun. <laughs> it's exciting. Wonderful. That's really great. So Ellen, can you now tell us about the inspiration behind Beneath a Canopy of Wings and your compositional process? Okay, well... I've got two major things that inspired me. First of all, uh, the performers who asked me to write this piece, Lizzie Darling, the flutist, who some of you, probably many of you know, and then um, Andrea Vos Rochefort, the clarinetist. And they're both people I knew at CCM and they have, an, they have a group called Duo Cylindre. Well, my French isn't too good right there. Cylinder, you know, but in French. And um, <laughs> they wanted to have a, a, an, a recording, you know, an album. Is that what you call them these days? I don't know. And it's Good called question. Movers, Makers, and Shakers. But they asked, you know, several composers to write pieces to be cool. on that. And so I was really excited to do that. They're both just such nice people and really fantastic performers. And then the other thing that inspired me is um, images from a poet friend of mine. His name is Norman Finkelstein. And uh, he has this book called Restless Messengers. 
and I will someday write a piece with that title. <laughs> but every <laughs> single title, the, the, the title Beneath the Canopy of Wings comes from his book, as well as all the titles from the uh, movements. And uh, the, the quote that I have at the top of the page also, that also comes from his book, um, a song hovers above the trees, settles in the branches, turns into a bird. That's one of the most inspiring things, I think. So that, I just love beautiful. that idea. Yeah, that's beautiful. Wonderful. It's, especially because um, I just am a melodic composer. There's, I mean, you know, I, I guess there's maybe my melody or my composers, my ah, sorry, my composition may not feel so melodic to people that aren't interested, you know, accustomed to contemporary music like right. this, but I still feel it always has a melodic impulse. And I'm sure that has to do with the fact that I, started off being a flute player right and honestly, I, I started on piano with my grandmother but it, I was it just never really took I was I really just when I knew I could play the flute I was really excited That's funny. and um I have to say actually when I was younger and in college that was not very cool <laughs> <laughs> so I felt for years like oh no I have to not do this but I finally just gave up and thought no what up you know this is who I am yeah so anyway I find his um expressions, his poetry, everything. I find it incredibly inspiring. So mm -hmm. that's what it's, uh, you know, that's kind of the inspiration behind the work, but um, I wasn't trying to imitate bird songs at all. That's not the point. I just really um, try to find an atmosphere or a feeling that it gives me. And that's what I take for the music. So um, for example, the first movement, the night bird song, Right. Honestly, I don't really know any night birds. I mean, I know that, you know, there are many of them, but I, I think the only one I know what it sounds like is the, the owl. So that right. would not be my idea of, a, right. <laughs> of really a song that I found very, you know, inspiring, but um, maybe a rhythm. But I, I just think of it as something that's supposed to be sort of mysterious. You know, it's nocturnal and, you know, there could be danger lurking. So there might be some abrupt changes, but uh, overall, just sort of like mysterious sort of full of a little bit of longing. Um, and that's kind of what I was trying to express. And, you know, I think, yeah, it's very, it's, I feel it's very melodic and I wanted it to be fluid and the voices are intertwining. Sometimes they're sort of imitating each other or maybe like a, a partial imitation. And then one of them is a little bit more elaborate. And then other times they're kind of separate. So it's sort of all, this kind of working together, you know, sometimes dependent on each other, sometimes more independent. I think that what you're trying to, yeah. Sorry, just no. this mysterious atmosphere. Yeah, I was gonna say that the, the combination of the melodic nature and the atmospheric nature is perfect. I, I love that idea. I think oh, that really, that really comes across in-, in Oh, the, thanks. Yeah, wonderful. And then the second movement, the Piper at the Gate of Dawn. Well, that's another one of my typos from Norman. It's supposed to be the Piper at the Gates of Dawn. I discover these things all the time. I've done it with vocal music for him too, um, <laughs> where I've messed things up, but um, regardless, it doesn't matter. Um, well, this one, I definitely just thought of joy. You know, the joy of birds singing at the beginning of the day. I, I, that's really what I was, you know, immediately thought of. But then, of course, as a composer, I was also thinking, well, I have to do something different from the first movement. So, you know, there's a little bit of trying to be inspired by the really, I mean, I think there would be many more birds, you know, than, than you know, the piper, it wouldn't be just one. But, um, and so here I was, so on the one hand, I was trying to express, but like I said, on the other hand, I'm trying to do something different. So um, I feel that they are much more independent in this, in this movement, since they were sometimes dependent on each other, they come together at some point, you know, to be kind of like in a rhythmic, uh, what do you call it, homo do you call it homophonic when it's only two lines, when they're both playing rhythmically together and then they, but they split apart again. But at the same time that they're independent, it's almost as if it's a um, macro line, mega line, whatever it's called, the flute initiates with this like crazy uh, gesture. And then the clarinet has sort of a, flat melody. I don't mean flat as in like boring, but just the contour is pretty much just very small. Right, right. And then the flute bursts out again. So it's almost as if the gesture of the piece is flute clarinet, flute, 
And so I just felt that was very different from the intertwining. Yeah. But um, I think it's also sometimes a little shrill, like birds can be in the morning, you know, and yeah. sometimes not. So just a completely different atmosphere, I felt like, but and mood of joy. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love that. It's really great. Um, yeah, I don't think I have much more to say than that. Oh, of course, it's much faster, of course, because I have if I have a slow movement, I want to have a, a fast. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, when I'm sometimes when I'm stuck on a piece, I'm like, uh, what next? Um, because I'm not a very good planner. I have to go through and rewrite a piece after I've written it and, you know, to make it actually really hang right. together for me. Um, I'm usually like, what can I do that's the opposite? <laughs> right. <laughs> That'll get me jump started again. Right. And then the third movement, A Thousand Farewells. It's a song of mourning. It's contemplative. That. Definitely. And at times it's even grief stricken when it gets a little strident. Right. And um, the mother of one of my very good friends, and I actually, the mother was a very good friend too. Uh, we all called her Oma, which is German for uh, grandmother. And it's not that she's even German, but <laughs> they, the family had a big, you know, big uh, relationship with uh, Germany. And I think that the father was a German um, descent. So that's how they called themselves, Opa and Oma. And everyone else did too. And she what was uh, diagnosed with um, very aggressive cancer when I was writing the third movement. And so this is sort of a, um, a song of mourning for her. And um, it's got a lot of repeated notes in it. Mm -hmm. So once again, I haven't done that a whole lot in the other movements. So I was at the same time trying to find something different. And it also has a sign motive, you know, da, 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 you know. It, Right. You know, and I thought that the repeating thing kind of makes it seem a little heavy, like right. you would be if you were in mourning. Right. And, um, you know, it's funny. Um, I did not think of this beforehand. But, you know, nowadays with the climate, I feel like it could be an elegy for the climate change, you know, the, 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 the environment that we're in, you know, everything is right. animals are going distinct, extinct, birds are going extinct, you know, so. Right. Like I said, I can't say, I can't say I thought of that to begin with, but it certainly feels fitting for now for me anyway. Yeah. I have to say that when I first heard it, I thought it was sort of an expression from two individuals. And I wrote to you about this, that I thought it was two individuals sort of expressing their feelings about what was happening with the environment. So that was my own interpretation of that. And Right. And I hadn't whole, even thought right. of that, but, but I remember when you wrote that, I thought, yeah. oh yeah, you know, it totally fits. I just, you know, at the yeah. time was thinking of Oma, but yeah. Um, yeah, especially since it's sort of like a, even though it's not about birds, it is about birds and all. Right. Yeah. And actually another thing I did notice afterwards, and this is all serendipitous, but you know, in that quote, a song hovers above the trees and mm -hmm. settles in the branches. I really thought, oh, wow, geez, that's the first movement. The song is hovering and sort of yeah. mysterious sort of hovering. And the second movement, it's turning into a bird sort of. And then the third movement, it's singing a song of mourning. Right. So, I mean, like I said, that was also just sort of, oh, wow, that works. It's beautiful. <laughs> it yeah. I'm really not good at thinking of things beforehand. I kind of like, I have to feel my way into a piece and then I kind of know where I'm going. But I cannot, I have spent so many times just like, oh, I'm going to have a big structure. I'm going to plan it all out. And then I just never follow it. And feel like sometimes I'm avoiding <laughs> doing the work. So yeah, like you just I'm have very, to go where your heart wants to go. Yeah. Right. And I'm very yeah. gestural. So I kind of think that comes first. I can't say, oh, it's going to be an E minor, which it kind of is. But you know, I yeah. I don't even worry about that until like I said, I always have to rewrite everything. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I a slow that. composer, as you can imagine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. Wonderful. So Ellen, who has most inspired you as a composer? Um, a lot of the composers that I find really inspiring are European composers, and that might have to do with the fact that I kind of came into composition more, I think, when I was in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are Boulez, Pierre Boulez, mm -hmm. who has an absolutely fantastic piece for flute and yes, <laughs> ensemble. I have tried so many times to completely write that piece for myself. I never succeed. So, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, how could I? But I love that piece. And then another composer is um, Georgi Ligeti, who's a Hungarian yes. composer. And mm -hmm. I just really 
when I first heard his orchestra piece Lontano, I couldn't believe how, it's, and once again, it's also one of these like floating pieces, right? I just right. love that piece. And he's also somebody that really, I think um, the kind of the, the, what they call the musical design is the thing that you really take away. I mean, it's totally atonal. We couldn't say, oh, that's in this or that key. And so, and I kind of like to pay a lot of attention to that kind of outside musical design too. And then uh, Luciano Berrio, um, he's got these just wonderful folk songs and then his symphonia. I just, so I can't say I like all of these composers, everything they've written, but there are certain pieces of theirs that I find incredibly inspirational. And then in the US, I really, really think that David Lang has written a lot of fantastic music, um, especially for vocal. You know, he really reduces things and kind of uses a small amount of material, but, you know, sort of keeps coming back to it and burying it and, I should call it post-minimal, you know, but yeah. I, I think it's really, really nice. So Ellen, how did you begin composing? Well, I didn't compose till college at the University of Illinois. Hmm. Okay. I went to a friend's uh, composition recital. It was a friend I met from theory class, I think the first semester. Hmm. So they had a composition recital and um, I went and I thought, well, I could do that. I, it just had never occurred to me. I just always thought that, the, I never, you know, I guess I'm not very deep, right? I was like, well, the music's already there. <laughs> so I, I asked if I could have lessons and they said yes. And um, so I was able to even able to change my major. That's wonderful. So, wonderful. I know it was, uh, it was just sort of, I think you'd say serendipity, right? Yeah. And I really, really liked the lessons in the, that program. So I'm glad I did. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just wake up and it's like, oh, there's a new idea. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. Beautiful. So Ellen, what do you like about writing for flute and what do you find challenging? Well, as you can imagine, having been a flute player, I love writing for the flute. Yes. And at some <laughs> point in my career, I had to say, okay, this piece doesn't get to have flute in it anymore because it's, it's all the fun stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I really love the tone of the flute and its agility and its connection to breath and the fluidity that it can bring. So I just, and well, and the staccato, you know, everything about the flute yeah. I absolutely love. Beautiful. And, yeah. Do you find anything particularly challenging or being a flute player yourself? Do you feel like those challenges, you sort of understand them and it's not really a big deal or? I think the worst part is when I really know what I want something to sound like. Mm -hmm. And I know the fingerings are not going to be nice for the flute player. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be you great know? if all composers knew that? No. <laughs> but I mean, that's, but I mean, then I still used it. And I mean, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm still a flute police and people have said to me, oh, there's this one spot where it's really not very nice. You know, there's just those four yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Well, and of course, you know that then too. Yeah. Right? Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so Ellen, for the last question today, can you just tell us a little bit more about other pieces that you've written for flute? Sure, I have a solo flute piece. It's actually one of the earliest pieces that I would consider something I would want anybody to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, it's called La Danse du Baladin, which is um, the charlatan's dance. Hmm. And I wrote, I wrote it when I was in graduate school at UC Berkeley, but I also wrote a lot, you know, started it there. Um, it actually had another life. It was part of a, a piece. Somebody had asked me to write a piece for countertenor and flute. And I had these few countertenor things and then it's like crazy wild flute piece. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, um, and one of my teachers said, well, you know, you kind of have to give the voice a little more. And that was when I realized, yeah, this is not a, this is not a duo. This is a solo. So I actually um, like just took out the other part and had to add, you know, I had to change things and add things. But I also, there was this dance festival, music and dance festival there. And they asked all of the composers to contribute. And so I played the piece kind of in its not finished form faking it a little bit because we were walking across a, it was all over the Berkeley campus so mine was the beginning and we were walking across a parking lot it's kind of an unfortunate you know setup given that you know there's so many beautiful places in Berkeley and I'm in a parking lot but it didn't matter we were moving and so obviously I didn't have a music stand with me or anything and 
So it did actually then very, very soon after uh, have a, a, a life as a flute piece. But then when I was at this summer camp in Fontainebleau, France, I actually then you know, went through and tried and figured out, okay, how can I get this to work? And that's why it has the name in French and that's why it's called a dance. Beautiful. And I was thinking of it as a, a dancer that kind of like is luring people a little bit like the Pied Piper mm -hmm. um, to a place where then these uh, people will sell them snake oil or something like that. I don't know why I had that image. But <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because the piece winds around a little bit. Cool, love it. And then I have two other duos and one of them is for flute and viola that um, Ellen Ruth Rose uh, asked me to, to write for her and Todd, uh-oh, I'm forgetting Todd's last name, um, in Earplay in San Francisco. Sorry, Todd. <laughs> anyway, um, we, we always laughed because Ellen, her name's Ellen Ruth and my middle name is Ruth. So it was the two Ellen Ruths. And that's called oh, Salad Bar. And for that one, I actually took a menu from a really, really snooty restaurant in the North Germany where I had been. And they were so, uh, they were so rude. And yet the food I had was full of salt, or not salt, full of sand. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, it had like the leather, leather, you know, menu holder. And, um, you know, I got some mushroom dish and I think they just didn't clean it well enough. And of course I was too intimidated to, to um, say anything. So I stole the paper menu out of the, out of the thing instead. <laughs> and the names were also flowery, you know, yeah. like, you know, beautiful springtime salad or something, you know, yeah. for, you know, so, so I stole Various. that and made a piece called salad bar, you know, with little movements that were with the titles of the, the salads and, you know, you can take it in any order. Eat your pretentious <laughs> salad, yes. <laughs> right. That's hilarious. And then I did a duo for flute and soprano called Between Magic and Possibility, also with texts from my good friend Norman <laughs> Finkelstein. Wonderful. And then I just used, you know, of course, the flute and a couple of Piero pieces. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, speaking with me today and sharing uh, your process and your wisdom with us. And we really appreciate it here. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you so much for giving me this award. It was, I was so excited. It's really nice of you. We, are, we love, we love your piece and your contribution. Thanks again. Thank you.